healing is here for you. Today's a great day. We're going to hear the Word of God. His Word is life and health and medicine to all our flesh. Hi, my name is Mark, and I'm glad to be with you along this healing journey. It's awesome. It's wonderful. We're going to talk about my healing journey a little bit, and also the healing journey of a crippled guy. Um, it's recorded in Scripture. So, God's Word works all the time. The Word of God will do exactly the same thing that Jesus did while he was here on the earth. Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. The Word of God will do exactly that same thing. The Word of God will bring healing to us as well. So let's look at Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You can look at that a couple of different ways. He sent his word, talking about the living word, Jesus coming from heaven. You know, John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And according to Acts 10, verse 38, he went about doing good and healing all who were, all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. He went healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Notice that healing, he healed all who were oppressed by the devil. It wasn't God, but it was Jesus going about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's 1 John 3, verse 8. So the Word of God became flesh. John 1, 14 says, And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And he went about doing good and healing. So Jesus' ministry here was teaching, preaching, and healing, doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And also Psalm 107, verse 20, he sent his word. You can take that as the written word. Of course he gave us the written word, the Bible, right? He sent his word and healed them. So the Word of God will do exactly the same thing that Jesus did when he was here on the earth. The Word of God will bring healing to you. As you read the Word of God, speak the Word of God in faith, the Word of God will bring healing and refreshment to your bones. And your whole body will be transformed. My body was transformed years ago. I'll get into that in a moment. So Psalm 107 verse 20, starting this message out with this, He sent His Word and healed them, and deliver them. Notice that the word brings healing and deliverance. Healing and deliverance. So if you're struggling with things, the word of God can bring healing and deliverance. If you have physical symptoms, physical pain, uh, broken bones, or, or paralysis, or anything, any terminal disease, the word of God will bring healing. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The word of God works. The Word of God works. The Word of God works every time. We have to believe it and just use bulldog faith and say, yeah, I believe the Word of God. Sometimes we just need to school ourselves into faith by reading and meditating on the Word. Which brings me to the next scripture. Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. My son, give attention to my words. Let's look at that. Proverbs 4, verse 20. My son, give attention. That means attend to the word of God. Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Incline. So let your ear hear my words. <clears throat> give attention to the word of God. That means if someone comes and knocks on your door or gives you a phone call or that type of thing, it's, it's like, oh, I, I'm already attending to something else. I have an appointment to hear the word of God. I have an appointment with God right now. So I'm attending to the word. My son, give attention to my words. His words are life. And then it says, incline your ear to my sayings. Incline your ear, incline your spiritual ears. Incline these ears. Incline your ear to my sayings. So we want to hear the word of God on a daily basis. Give us this day our daily bread. We want to hear the word of God. My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. So you want to see it. 
Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Verse 22 says, For they are life to those who find them, and health and medicine to all their flesh. Look at that again. My son, give attention to my word, my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. You are going to hear it. Do not let them depart from your sight. You're going to see it. So you're going to hear the word of God. You're going to see it. You're going to hear the word of God. You're going to see it. You'll hear it and see it. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. What happens when you hear the word of God on a continual basis and you see the word of God on a continual basis? It gets lodged into your heart. Whatever you hear and see has a way of making itself at home in you, of finding residence in you, of making its way inside your heart. Whatever you hear, whatever you see on a consistent basis will lodge itself in your heart. Give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So you're hiding God's word in your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart, why? Verse 22, for their life to those who find them. So we have to find the word of God. Do you have the word of God on a subject or the subject of healing? You have to find the word of God on it. Find scriptures that cover your case. Then you have a sure foundation for your faith. Find scriptures for whatever you're going through. Sickness, addictions, whatever. Find scriptures for your case then you can have a sure foundation for your faith. Faith is a firm foundation, something to stand on. Are you standing on the word? Yeah, that's where faith begins. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins by you seeing and hearing the word of God for yourself, that it comes alive in you. It's alive in you. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Let it richly dwell within you. I love this phrase. It says, consume the word and the word will consume you. <laughs> Let the word become alive in you. In Jesus' name. So notice this in Proverbs 4 it says, Do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So once you get the word of God in your heart, then it says, for they are life, or because they are life to those who find them. So the Word of God is life. As you hear it and see it, it gets in your heart. The Word of God is life to you. The Word of God is life to those who find them. And then the last part of verse 22 says, and health to all their flesh, or health to all their whole body. That word health in the Hebrew is marpe, M-A-R-P-E, marpe. Their life to those who find them and health, marpe, to all their flesh. The word health there means health, it means a cure, it means a remedy. So the word of God is life to those who find them and health, a cure, a remedy, which also means medicine. So the word of God is life, health, a cure, a remedy to you. It's a cure for you, it's a remedy. Someone says, you know, there's no cure for the sickness. There's no cure. They told me, like, this is terminal. There's no cure. Who told you that? <laughs> the Word of God is the cure. It says, their life to those who find them and health is a cure to you. It's a remedy to you, which also means medicine to you. It's medicine for you. There is a cure. God's Word is the cure. God Himself is the cure. Hallelujah. Healing is here for you. God's word is a cure. It's life and, and health. It's a cure, a life to those who find them, and health, a cure, a remedy, and medicine to all their flesh. I love that. So the word of God is medicine. Think about that. So Proverbs 4, according to this, Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22, the word of God is medicine to you. Now jump back to Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So God's word is healing, according to Psalm 107, verse 20, and deliverance. And according to Proverbs 4, God's word is life and health and a cure and remedy and medicine. 
God's word is healing. God's word is medicine. God's word is medicine to those who find them. God's word is medicine to all your flesh. God's word does that. Glory to God. Aren't those two great scriptures? Psalm 107, verse 20, and Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. In verse 23, Proverbs 4 says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. So watch over your heart. Guard your heart, for from it flow the the issues or the boundaries and borders of your life. Healing is for you. So those two scriptures are powerful. God's word, as we hear it today, brings health, <clears throat> brings a cure, it's a remedy, and it's medicine to you. I believe healing is happening right now for you. And for me, I feel strengthened every time I hear the word myself. Hallelujah. Let God's word just sink into you right now. Meditate on the word of God. How many are God's words for? The Bible, the gospel. How many are God's words for? You say, everybody, right? If God's words are for everybody, then healing is for everybody. Why? Because God's word is medicine. Do you see that? We just shared it according to Psalm 107, verse 20, and Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22, that God's word is medicine to us. It's healing and medicine to us. So God's word is medicine. Well, how many is God's words for? Everybody. If God's words are for everybody, then healing is for everybody because God's word is healing. God's word is medicine. Do you see that? Isn't that awesome? <laughs> You can't say God's word is, is only for like this, this half of the planet and the other half not. God's word is for certain people or for a few, but you know, no, the gospel is for everybody. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every person. So the gospel is for everybody. It's for everybody. That'd be silly to say, no, the Bible is not for everybody. It's only for some people. In the same way, it's silly to say that, you know, healing is only for certain people or, you know, uh, this group of people here or this half of the planet, you know. No, no. If the gospel is for everybody, then healing is for everybody because God's word is healing and medicine to us. So all you have to do is pick up the word and you bring healing to your body right now. Read the word of God, meditate on the word, and receive it by faith and God's word is working in you. Hallelujah in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. God's word is in you. And according to Romans 8, verse 11 says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal body through his spirit who indwells you. So the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, think about that. The spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead now lives inside of you. So you've got raising from the dead power on the inside of you. Now we're not talking about, we don't need to be uh, probably raised from the dead today, but the, we just need some of that healing power. You know, get all you want, right? But if the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also Give life and health and medicine and a cure to your physical body now in Jesus' name. Because if you're a believer, you've received Christ as your Savior, you're born again, you have the life of God in you now. 1 John verse, verse five, chapter 5, verse 12. 1 John 5, verse 12 says, He who has the Son has the life. That's the life of God. He who does not have the Son of God does not have the life. We have the life of God in us. We have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living inside of us. And that spirit of God gives life to our mortal body, to our physical body. So you need healing in your body? It's coming from within. The spirit of God on the inside of you, coming within. So the word of God is in you bringing health and medicine to you. And yet, the, and also the spirit of God that lives inside of you is bringing health and life, a cure, a remedy and medicine to your physical body right now. If you get consumed with the word, the word will consume you.
Consume the Word, and the Word will consume you. Consume you with what? With His life, with His healing, with His power, with His love. That's great news. Glory to God. His Word is life to those who find them and health and medicine to all their flesh. So we're letting the Word of God wash us today. Letting our spirits and our, and our minds be cleansed by the washing of the water with the Word. Hallelujah. The Word is life. The Word is, is compared to it is, is water. Hallelujah. We have to have the water of God. And out of, his, out of His belly shall flow rivers. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. You have living water to give to people when you have Jesus inside you. Let that living, living water come up out of you and minister life and healing to other people. Praise God. Sense, Sheke, hallelujah, praise God. The life of God is good. Hallelujah. You know, we, we, we don't have to sense Him. Thank God we sense His presence. We sense His power. We sense His healing and His healing anointing. But also, we don't have to sense anything because we have the Word of God. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Another way to say that is we walk by the word. This is my Bible here. We walk by the word. We walk by faith. Well, how's faith come? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 10 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith. So we walk by faith. Where do we get faith? By the word. We walk by the word and not by sight. Or we walk by the word and not by our physical senses. Not by sight, not by what we physically see out here. We walk by the word of God. So we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word and not by our physical senses. Not by what the world is dictating to us. Not by what we feel or not by what we see. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word. Glory to God. <laughs> How do we get on that? We walk by faith and not by sight. <sighs> Romans ten seventeen says, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. I love that. So we're just talking about the word, God's word being medicine and health to us, but we must receive it by faith. You know, what God's been, what's, what's been provided by grace must be received by faith. Right? That's why faith is so important. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance. So that word faith is basically a firm, means per, firm persuasion or strong belief. It's a full conviction. Now faith, it's a full conviction. Now faith is the substance. The word substance can also be uh, rendered Foundation. Faith is the foundation. Faith is the substance, the foundation. The foundation, so it's, it's, uh, it's holding up something. Faith is the foundation of things hoped for. That word hope also means expected. There's an expectation. Faith, the, faith is the substance of things expected. I like saying it that way. <clears throat> if you look up that word hope, you'll see expect or expectation. It's a joyful, confident expectation of good things. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith, this firm persuasion, this strong belief, this fully persuaded conviction, now faith is the foundation that which sits under. So foundation sits under something, but it's holding something up. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says, He's upholding all things by the word of His power. He's upholding all things by the word of His power. If, if you want to be upheld, get on the word, right? He's upholding all things by the word of His power. So faith is the foundation. It's something that we can stand on. Faith is the foundation of things hoped for or expected. Not like the worldly sense of hope, just like, you know, I hope this thing happens, you know, it may or may not. No, faith is the foundation of things expected. Faith expects. 
Faith is a foundation of things expected. I'm expecting healing today. I'm expecting the presence of God to minister to people. Those that hear this for in the ages to come, <laughs> forever and ever, in the next month, the next year, the years to come. Faith is the foundation of things expected. What are you expecting? I'm expecting healing. I'm expecting wholeness in my body every day. To be strong and to do the will of God. To be strong and, and give glory to God, right? We grow strong in faith, giving glory to God. I know in uh, is it Romans 4, it says, And Abraham was fully persuaded. Fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. <laughs> I like that. Being fully persuaded, that's faith. Being fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able also to perform. And he grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. I like that. Back to Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance, the foundation of things hoped for or expected. The evidence of things not seen. Some people think, well, faith, you, you, can't, you can't see it. It doesn't, I mean... It's, it's just kind of this nebulous thing out there. No, faith is the foundation. It's the substance. There's a substance to it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for or expected. Then it says the evidence. So faith is the evidence of things not seen. Not seen with my physical eye, but I can see with my spiritual eyes. With my eyes of faith. <clears throat> my goodness. Being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. That's Romans 4, verse 17 through 22 in there. It's great, great about it. We'll talk about that later, maybe. But faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence. Faith is the substance of things expected. The substance of things expected. Then it says the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the evidence of things not seen. You say, I don't see healing in my body. But it's the evidence of things not seen. So if you have faith, you have the evidence. One, trans trans one translation says this, Faith is the title deed. <laughs> the evidence of things not seen. Like if you buy something, you, you purchase a car, faith is the title deed. You might buy a car online, you buy something online and, you know, uh, for a house or, or a car or something, you get, you get a receipt or you get the title deed for that thing. Faith is the title deed. So you just purchase something, but you have the receipt, you have the confirmation order. Faith is the evidence. It's the, it's the title deed. If you purchased a car, it's the title deed for that car. Even though you don't see the car yet, but the car is on the way. Faith is the title deed, the evidence of things not seen. I like that. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. You may not see it yet, but you see it with your heart of faith. You see it. So 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen. So we're not looking at the things that are out here. So faith doesn't uh, deny the reality like maybe somebody's sick, something's going on, but faith denies its right to stay there in your body. So we don't just continually look at sickness. It says, while well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are, which are seen are temporal. They're temporary, these symptoms. But the things which are not seen are eternal. God's word is eternal. God's word is life. So we look at health. We see through the eyes of faith, we see ourselves healed and whole. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. So how do you look at things that are not seen? See with inside your heart, see yourself healed and whole. See yourself walking. See yourself getting up out of a wheelchair. See yourself free from broken bones. See yourself free from every disease. Get up and move and do something you couldn't act on. When God's word gets in you, he'll, you'll, he'll get instruction to you. <laughs> he'll, he'll tell you what to do. He'll show you what to do. You won't do something foolish, but you do. You want to act in faith. Acting in faith. 
So with the eyes of faith, you see yourself well. Praise the Lord. So my healing journey is this. Years ago, I jumped off a cliff. How many of you ever did that? I jumped off a Tarzan rope swing. Uh, it was my third time out that day. It was up at this place. It was called Loyal Hannah Dam. It was in Pennsylvania. And uh, we had done that, you know, the year before as well. And it's kind of a fun thing that kids did. I was 19 years old at the time. And um, this time I, I, I got the rope. And uh, I, I, I was holding it and, uh, up on the, on the cliff there. It was about 30 feet up. And what we would do is we'd jump off the cliff and then swing out over the water. Yee-hee! And drop. And then we'd drop about, you know, again, like 30 feet or so. It was, it was pretty uh, sensational. And we'd fall into the water and it was like, wow, that's pretty cool. But we jumped off the cliff and then it, it was like a little slack. So it would really spring you out. And then you'd get out over the water. But that day or the week before or whatever, someone had tied some extra rope to the to the, the rope before, I mean, from the year ago and, and stuff. And so we had to hold the rope up before so it wouldn't dangle and get messed up, tied up in our feet. So the third time when I jumped out that day, I jumped out over the, jumped off the cliff. And I was hanging onto this Tarzan rope and I swung out. And when I got out this time, I felt the rope wrap around my, my, my feet, my ankles. And I, in a split second decision, I'm like, what do I do? Do I let go? I, do I come back? And like, I decided to hold on. I didn't want to be dang. I didn't want to be dangling, you know, just from my feet. It's like, uh, so I just held on. I, the rope was wrapped around my, my feet. And so I, I came back and swung. I, I, it brought me back to the cliff. Very, very forceful. And I hit the cliff. Somehow I turned around and my, both my heels dug into the cliff. And um, I hit the cliff, and then I, I fell loose from the rope, and then fell about 15 feet, shallow rocks and water below, passed out for a moment. And I, so I banged my, my I, I hit my, with my feet, I severely crushed both my heels, um, fractured my back, I didn't know that at the time. But anyways, I fell into the rocks and water, passed out, and then my friend brought a, a inner tube down the way, he put me on the inner tube, <laughs> flowed me down the rest of the, the way there to get to his Jeep. He brought his Jeep down the trail, put me in the back of the Jeep and took me to a, the hospital emergency room, about 45 minute trip. And I was just hurting and hurting and hurting. So I didn't like that. Anyways, they, they uh, x-rayed everything and stuff. They, they sent me home, but I was just in a lot of pain. I had passed out in the emergency room again. But God, thank God. Anyways, I severely crushed my heels. I'll get to the good part. I severely crushed my heels. And then it's three days before my sister's wedding. But, you know, my dad was a pastor, but I didn't know about, I didn't know Jesus personally for myself. And so I had to come to understand that. But anyways, I, and I didn't know anything about healing. So I was, I was in a wheelchair for a couple of weeks, I had her crawl around on, on basketball knee pads that my mama got me so I could get around the house and everything. Crawled around on that. That's how I got around for a couple of weeks. And then in a wheelchair, just running around with that. And then finally got to some crutches again, but then I had severely, uh, my, 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 my heels were crushed. They hurt bad. So when I learned to walk again, I then went from the wheelchair, the crutches, about you know six weeks on crutches. And then I started walking a little bit more and more. And then still hurt after that. So I just had this pain for the next basically six years. And um, <laughs> hoping to get better. I didn't know anything. But then I finally one day, um, I got a hold of some word on TV. I heard some word. And then uh, I started devouring the word, loving the word more and more. And then fast forward, I, I started getting called to forward. And I, I get called to more into ministry. And I went to a Bible college and they shared some good things, but they didn't really, they weren't really, weren't really strong on the healing message. And so I said, well, I need to get healed. So I left there and went to another college, Bible college, where I heard that they shared, you know, faith and healing and love, the power of God and the moving of the spirit. And I went there and my first class 
I'll never forget, it's called Christ the Healer. Again, go back to the very beginning, we talked about Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And then Proverbs 4, verse 20 through 22. For their life to those who find them and health and medicine to all their flesh. Health, a cure, a remedy, medicine. I was sitting in this class and the word became life to me because I was finding it. It became life and health and a cure. It was a remedy to me. It was medicine. It was becoming alive to my flesh and my body. So I started hearing the word of God and it's like, man, it's like the lights were being turned on in my head and my heart and I was, I was seeing like I could be well. And they were sharing me truth after truth after truth of the word of God, just the scriptures. That Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God ever healed somebody yesterday, then we know that healing is for us today because he's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. God says, I am the Lord, I change not. I don't change. Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I do not change. And Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Think about this. If somebody on the planet ever got healed, then you know that healing is for you. Healing is for all. If one person on the planet ever got healed, if Jesus ever, ever ministered healing to one person, if God ever ministered healing to one person on the planet, then you know that healing is for all. Healing is for you. Why? Because God is not a respecter of persons. If he did it for one, he'll do it for you. If he did it for this one, he'll do it for all. God is not a respecter of persons. Acts 10.34, Romans 2.11, and Ephesians 6.9 say this, that God is not a respecter of persons. There's no partiality with him. There's, he's not partial to one person over another. God shows no partiality, no favoritism. So God is not a respecter of persons. So we know the healing is all. If God ever ministered healing to one person on the planet, then we know healing is for everybody. Healing is for all because God does not change. That's good news. How many are God's words for? Everybody. God's word is healing, so God's word is for everybody. Healing is for everybody. And if God ever ministered healing one person, God's not a respect our persons, then we know that healing is for you because God shows no partiality with anybody. God has healing for you. Healing is for everybody. Healing is for everybody. Praise God. <laughs> healing is for me. Healing is for you. Praise God. Preventative maintenance, preventive medicine is right here in the Word of God. The Word of God is life. Jesus said this in John 6, 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I've spoken to you are spirit and are life. God's word is life to those who find them and medicine to all their flesh. So while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, through the eyes of faith, we see ourselves well. So here I am in this class, Christ the healer, and I'm hearing the word of God. I'm hearing truth after truth after truth. What did Jesus say? John 17, 17. He said, sanctify them in the truth. He said, your word is truth. The word of God says, his word is light. In your light, we see light. I believe it's Psalm 36, verse 9. In your light, we see light. And he gives us more light. God is light. So we get surround ourselves with the word. We surround ourselves with, with the atmosphere of faith and people who believe along the same lines. We, we hear the truth of God and, and, and that truth and that healing, that medicine starts working in us. It's real important to be in an, in an atmosphere of faith where you hear the word of God, where you see the word of God. And we have people encouraging with the, you with the word of God as well. So I was hearing this word. I was sitting in this classroom, Christ the Healer, at this Bible college. And I had it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -mm. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But then they had Monday through Thursday. There was a healing school. So I got healing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I heard the word of God of healing. So consume the word and the word will consume you. It's life to those who find them and health and medicine to all their flesh. So I was sitting in the word of God and it's like these lights came on and, and I hear in the truth and I was like, wow, God wants me well. Can this be? Is it true? 
and I hear a little bit more. Wow, God wants me well, or they're sharing another truth, another story in the Bible, another, another account of healing in the account, you know, another healing account, another to God's goodness and God's love, and he's not a respecter of persons, and God's word is for everybody, and sickness is a work of the devil, and, and because of God's original creation, and heaven and the world to come, and there's no sickness in heaven, and there's no, so there shouldn't be a sickness on the earth, you know, and your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10, right? All these truths, I heard truth after truth after truth after truth. It's like, I believe, I believe. Because how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God or by the word of Christ. Actually, literally, it means that, the word of Christ, which means the anointed one or the Messiah. The anointed word, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ, the anointed word. Faith comes by hearing the rhema word, the spoken word. The word of Christ, the anointed word of God. What is God sharing with you now? What, what Faith comes by hearing the word of God spoken by his written word and also by God giving you a living word by the spirit of God. Faith comes by hearing. So I was hearing faith comes by hearing all this truth that I was hearing about the Bible, about Jesus going about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil. Faith rose in my heart. How does faith come? It comes by hearing and hearing by the anointed word of God, the anointed word of Christ. So faith got in me, I was like, I believe this. <laughs> I believe the word of God, and so like, I believe I'm healed. Now understand, I was sitting, I, I had six years of pain. Six years, severely crushed my heels, fractured my back. I could walk maybe like 50 yards, and I feel pain go up my back, pain in my, in my feet. I couldn't go through a grocery store because the, 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 the freezer section, the refrigerator section, is like it'll go right to my feet. I didn't, it bothered me. <laughs> I didn't have like the circulation in, in that type of thing. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> and here I am, hearing the Word of God, and it's changing my body. And as I could walk maybe like, you know, 50 yards and then walk again. I remember walking to class one time and I had to stop because of the pain. I couldn't get to class. I had to stop. And, oh, okay, wait for the pain to subside, and then start walking again. Walking by faith, <clears throat> not by sight. We walk by the word and not by our physical senses. And the word of God became real to me. I heard the word of God day in, day out, day in, day out. Not just hearing the word of God, because you can hear the word and it not change your life. That's important. You can hear the word of God 24-7, and yet, yet it not affect you. What do you mean it not affect you? Because faith, hearing the word of God, must be united by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ, the anointed word. So the word you hear must be united by faith. Hebrews 4 verse 2 says this, the word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. The word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. Wow. You mean the word can still not profit somebody? They can hear the word and hear the word and hear the word and, and yet it not profit them? Sounds contradictory. I mean, the Word of God is life, right? I'm funny. Yeah, but you must mix faith with the Word. Thank God for hearing the Word, but you want to mix faith with the Word. Hebrews 4, 2 says, The Word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. Another scripture with that, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13 says, When you heard God's message, you accepted it. It says, You accepted the Word of God, you accepted the word of God's message, not as the words of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. You accepted it not as the word of men, but the word of God. You see that? You accepted it as the word of God. Mark chapter 4, verse 20, and the sower sowing the seed, the sowing the word, the word is <clears throat> compared to the seed, is the word. The word is the seed. And it says you accepted it. 
you have to accept the word. You have to receive the word, right? Accepting or receiving the word. James 1.21 says, In humility, receive the word implanted. Receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. So the word of God you want to receive. So again, Hebrews 4.2, 4 verse 2, and 1 Thessalonians 2.13 says, You accept the word of God. For what it really is, the Word of God, which also performs its work in you. So when you accept the Word of God, it performs the Word of God in you, which also performs its work in you who believe. Where is the Word of God? In you. Your Word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. You have the Word of God richly dwelling within you. Colossians 3, 16, let the Word of Christ richly dwell within you. So the Word of God is working in you when you mix faith with it. You can hear and hear and hear the Word of God, but we want to be like, you know, just throughout a message, throughout this message, if you believe this, then you say, I believe this. I believe the Word. I believe that by Jesus' stripes I was healed. I believe. We know it was one stripe because his flesh was, his back was laid open. It was one wound. By his wound or by his stripe, you were healed. You can say, I believe that. I believe healing is for me, and I take it right now. I receive it. The word receive also means take. Take. I, I take it by faith. Just like if I was going to hand you my Bible, say, this Bible is free, go ahead. It's yours. But is, is, is the Bible yours? Is the Word of God yours right now? Is this free gift of me giving you my Bible, is it yours? Well, it's here, but you don't have it. It's right here. You, have, you must receive it or take it. By, you take it into yourself. So salvation is for everybody. Healing is included in salvation. Salvation and healing go hand in hand. So salvation is for everybody on the planet. Healing, healing is for everybody on the planet. But you must take it into yourself. John 1.12 says, But as, man, as many as believed in him, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. As many as received him or take him as their own, he, became, he, he gave them the power to become the children of God or the sons of God. So we must receive the promises of God by faith. Take it by faith. The word they heard did not profit them because it was not united by faith in those who heard. But we mix faith with the word of God. We say, I believe it. I receive it into my heart right now. I receive the Word of God in my heart. Just say that. I receive the Word of God. I believe it. I receive it. And I take it by faith. Matthew 11, verse 12 says, The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and violent men take it by force. We take things by force because it's been provided. What's been provided by grace must be received by faith. God already provided healing for you. We just need to receive it by faith. Just receive it and just take it. What's been provided by grace must be received by faith. Salvation has been secured. Redemption has been secured. It's just sitting there for everybody to receive and take. Amen. So let's go back to my class now. While sitting in Christ the Healer, I heard the word. The word came. The word came. And I mix faith with the Word of God. They were sharing, sharing truth after truth after truth. Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, He said, if you continue in my Word, then you are my disciples indeed. If you continue, if you abide in my Word, then you are my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. So I heard the Word. I heard the Word. I heard the Word. And I mix faith with the word like that. That's me. It's like I was done with the pain thing. Six years of constant pain, not being able to walk very well or not very far, having pain in my feet. Also, uh, hit my back. I, you know, I injured my back some. And <laughs> they didn't see the. Three years later, they saw a fracture in my my left foot and a fracture in my back. How did that get there? I went to three doctors before. They didn't find it, but they said, "Yeah, you you crushed your heels." But then they said, now you have a fracture in your back. <laughs> and went to another doctor. Yeah, there's a fracture in your foot, fracture in your back. And uh, long story short, uh, <laughs> after I was healed, there's no more fracture in my back and no more fracture in my foot. 
God had healed me. Praise the Lord. So I'm sitting in class and I'm receiving the word. I'm receiving the word. I mix faith with the word. And then I'm doing what I know to do. They said, they're assuring that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And they said that Jesus talked to things because faith has a voice. Faith will speak to things. Uh, you know, Jesus was on in the, in the, the storm, you know. And it, it says he got up and his disciples were scared and afraid and and Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind and the waves and it became calm and still. He spoke to the wind and the waves and the wind and the waves obeyed his voice. Interesting, huh? Or was the storm from God? No. <laughs> no, the storm uh, was not from God. And so Jesus rebuked it. If the storm was from God, then Jesus was rebuking God. He was rebuking his father. But Jesus said, I always do those things that please him, my father. I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Right? And so Jesus and the father are not divided. So Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves. He was rebuking the wind and the waves. Whether it you know, things are from the devil or just this natural creation. Earth is off, you know. It, it's been messed up. But he rebuked the wind and the waves. And my point is that the wind and the waves obeyed Jesus. Jesus also spoke to a fever. Peter's mother-in-law uh, had a fever. And Jesus went and spoke to the fever. That means the fever heard. The fever had ears. Jesus spoke to the fever and the fever left. So the fever heard what Jesus spoke. Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves. He spoke to a fever. And then we know we also, he spoke in Mark chapter 11, he spoke to a fig tree. He cursed the fig tree because it was not bearing fruit. He cursed the fig tree. He spoke. So his words had authority and power. In fact, the religious people of that day says, what kind of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him, that, that things obey him. It says, what kind of man is this? This man speaks with authority. He commands the unclean spirits and they come out. He speaks with authority and not as the scribes and teachers of the law. Not, he didn't speak like religious people. He speaks as one having authority. Authority. The Bible said in Proverbs, says, where the word of a king is, there is power. We, according to Revelations 1, 5 and, and the Chapter 5 also says, We've been made kings and priests unto our God. And so where the word of a king is, there is power. So we are priests and kings, those of us who are born again. And so where the word of a king is, there is power. Our words should have power behind them. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20 says, The kingdom of God does not consist in word, but in power. It's not just by flip and words, but in power. In demonstration. So I'm sitting in class, I'm hearing the truth. I'm like, I believe this. Remember, I'm sitting in class, in class, hearing the word of God, hearing the word of God, and it's, it's ministering to me, and uh, the atmosphere of faith there, praise God. We all need to have a quiet, quiet place where we can have the atmosphere of faith, hearing the word on a daily basis, letting that word get inside of us. So I heard the word of God, I heard the word of God, and then they, you know, they're sharing about Jesus speaking to things, and now we also have the same Spirit of God that He had. And that Spirit of God will lead us to say things in line with the Word of God. And so I, now as a son of God, as a king and a priest, I now had authority. Jesus had given us authority and power to speak and to declare. He said in Matthew 10, verse uh, 7 and 8, He said, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. So he told us, you know, uh, in Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So I had death or life coming out of my mouth. So I could speak life and healing out of my mouth. Jesus said my words are spirit and they're life. So I declared to, to speak what, what Jesus was saying to me. My words have life and power. So I started speaking, speaking, speaking. This is what I did. I said, feet back. I call you strong. 
What am I doing? I'm saying what I believe. And out of a heart of faith, my heart will speak. Matthew 12, 12, 34 says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Remember, as you hear the word of God and see the word of God, it gets lodged in your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So I said, I call my feet and back strong. I call you strong and healed and whole. I started seeing myself well. I see myself walking and running, walking and running, and I call my feet and back strong. I'm healed and whole. Then I can kind of go over some scriptures like, by his stripes I was healed. He himself took my infirmities and carried away my disease. All those scriptures. He sent his word and healed me and delivered me from my destruction. And I believed that I had healing in me. Praise God. I'm going to end right there and we'll pick up again another time. But the word of God works in you. Let the word of God wash you and cleanse you. And there's life and power coming out of your heart when you mix faith with the word of God and speak to your situation. Find scriptures that cover your case. Then you have a firm foundation for your faith and you can be healed and whole. He sent his word and healed you and delivered you from your destruction. I love you. Jesus loves you. And the word of God is medicine to you today. Play this. Receive the word of God over and over and over. And healing is happening inside you. I love you. Jesus loves you. Amen.